Thank you, Lucien, uh, and thank you for involving me in, in this report. It's been very uh, interesting. Um, I, I haven't worked on this sort of interaction between information technology, energy policy and law in a, in a number of years, so it's been good to, to revisit it again. Um, I'm going to talk about some specific issues in terms of data protection, but I'm also, I think, in a lot of ways, picking up themes that were in some of this, this session earlier. Uh, particularly some of the topics that Sergio brought up and also picking up themes that I think have come up uh, across the two days of, of this summit. Um, it uh, is clear, uh, particularly from the, the, the um, presentation that Sergio gave, that there's a lot of public concern about uh, profiling uh, in this area, the way in which uh, this type of data can reveal an awful lot about your personal lifestyle, your health, uh, family situation, uh, religion, and so on. Um, <clears throat> but that profile also is um, useful and is connected to some of the other um, key requirements, uh, particularly things around questions around uh, sustainability and, and affordability and, and so on. So there is on the one hand, a um, desire to have better profiling, and on the other hand, uh, public concern around that, and transparency is one way to deal with those uh, concerns. Really what's needed here at the end of the day, I think, is trust on the part of consumers and what is being done with their data and what's happening in these uh, large infrastructures. So I'm going to approach this from my particular perspective, which is not as an engineer or as an economist, but as a lawyer. Um, and talk about data protection as one possible way to achieve some of these as a, as a, um, and I, I suppose I'm approaching it from two perspectives uh, or two suggestions in that area. One is that data protection and compliance with other legal rules should be regarded as a floor, as a, as a basic requirement that needs to be complied with uh, nonetheless, uh, but also as a way of actually improving take up and, and uh, use of this technology and making this technology something that uh, becomes better accepted and, and better used. I am uh, perhaps ironically going to do that uh, by first of all presenting some case studies which show the downsides of a lack of engagement with these principles but then I'm also going to present case studies which show how it can be done right um, and there are some others are referenced in the report as well for those who want to uh, read a little bit further. Lucien if you could just move on to the next slide. Very good, thank you. Um, so um, first of all, I'm going to talk a little bit about the smart meter program uh, in the UK. Uh, perhaps just a little bit of background, which isn't on the slide, um, but sort of sits in, in the background to this is that around the same time, uh, the Netherlands had also uh, undertaken a smart metering program, which ran into considerable difficulties because uh, privacy wasn't entirely taken as seriously as some people did. And there was considerable civil society uh, and uh, political pressure, a lot of uh, public concern about it. It needed essentially to be uh, reconsidered uh, from the ground up. But around the same time, the UK, as I say, was, was beginning its uh, smart meter uh, program. Um, and in a um, particular study of it by a, a British academic, uh, he found that in 2008, there was no mention of uh, privacy in the initial report. Uh, there was a consultation a year later, which mentioned privacy is in, in passing, essentially. Um, and what ended up happening was that there is a, a statutory uh, body called Consumer Focus, which put considerable pressure on, uh, the, um, on, on the developers of this program um, and um, made them focus uh, much more on uh, the uh, need to take data protection seriously. Um, and um, as a result, when, as the, as the uh, Smart Meter Program developed, it incorporated a much more significant focus on privacy um, and ultimately ended up in a very, with a very similar set of rules to the uh, program uh, that was rolled out in the Netherlands, uh, which, uh, and also uh, similar to the program that was rolled out in Germany, which was very good and very compliant. Um, and one possible conclusion we can draw from this is that uh, if those uh, privacy issues had been considered at an earlier stage, then the system might have been better from a, a, a privacy perspective and the overall development could have been cheaper because there wouldn't have been the need to revisit this privacy issue later. So I think the lesson we can draw from that maybe is the need to involve multiple stakeholders in these types of considerations. And I think that's very important for all of the uh, key requirements really. Lucien, if you could just move on to the next slide, please. Yeah. 
So then also to look at a, um, <clears throat> a smart meter program uh, in Ireland, which is uh, still not uh, entirely uh, complete. And again, in the background to this, there are other issues which uh, inform the way in, the pub in which the public think about it. Uh, we had had a um, significant issue with a um, water supply body, Irish Water, uh, which is the national body responsible for provision of water, uh, where they had had to uh, change course quite uh, drastically in their uh, um, approach to privacy and had to delete a lot of customer data, which they initially said that was, was okay. Um, but um, in 2007, uh, we began a national smart uh, metering program. Um, and again, in a study that was conducted by an Irish academic, uh, she found that uh, in a consultation paper in 2013, privacy was not considered one of the five key design principles. Um, and in 2014, when uh, this uh, was moved on to the next iteration, privacy was regarded as something that needed to be balanced against the other goals of, or against the goals of the program. So she makes the point that really uh, best practice requires the privacy is built in at the earliest possible point. Um, and this is a, the, 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 this was the lesson that I want to draw from this, um, which I think is quite important for the, all of the AI for people uh, uh, reports is that if something is a requirement uh, as privacy by design is under European law, then it is something that needs to be central to uh, the process from the very outset and not to be seen as something to be balanced against other things. If it's a requirement, it's a requirement. It needs to be integrated uh, entirely in the process. Now, I, as uh, Lucien mentioned at the outset, I do have some experience in systems design. It's quite a long time ago since I did anything like that, but I do know that uh, if you have multiple requirements, it can be quite challenging. So I am not saying that this is easy, um, but I am saying it is required nonetheless. If the, if the seven key requirements are really to be requirements rather than optional extras, then there are, some things, there are things that need to be included in the design process from the, uh, the very outset. And listen, if you move on maybe to the next slide, um, I just very briefly present a case study which highlights how uh, this sort of thing can actually be done well. And there are some others uh, in the report if you want to, to read them in, in more detail. So this case study is a little bit old. Um, <clears throat> it's, it's about 10 years old now at this point. Um, it is uh, based on a um, major European energy company called Vattenfall. I'm not sure what they're doing now in terms of their meters, but they, at the time at least, were taking privacy seriously and I'm presuming and hoping that they still uh, do. Um, and they um, involved privacy at all stages of the process and they came up with a variety of different solutions that helped to make this real. Uh, they developed uh, different meters. You can see a graphic there on the, on the slide, which um, illustrates what they look like. Um, and the more sophisticated meters uh, had much more communication back to, um, uh, through, the, through the grid, uh, to the, the su supplier, but a basic meter did not have that. Uh, and you had choices in terms of the extent to which even your basic meter might be something that you could interrogate. Uh, from, from within the home. So consumers were given a choice of de device. They were given a choice as to the extent to which their data was to be shared. And they were given choices about what they could do uh, uh, afterward. Um, in terms of the installation of these, there, there, there were strong technical guidelines which respected individual privacy. And the meters themselves were installed in a location that was not publicly accessible, but was in a specific meter room. So access was controlled at all stages. Um, and one of the key aspects to this again reiterating I suppose or, or highlighting the, the uh, positive uh, approach that can be taken here is that the data protection representative was involved at each stage of the process and privacy was considered throughout the process from uh, beginning to end. Um, so the lesson again maybe to repeat myself a little bit um, is that we should include these um, sorts of social and economic uh, legal ethical questions um, from the outset of any project that involves AI, that involves new technology. Um, and I would suggest that this applies not just to privacy, which I've just taken because that's my particular area of expertise, uh, but also in terms of things like uh, fairness, non-discrimination, um, integrating sustainability, uh, and so on. I think it's very important that those non-technical issues have a seat at the table, essentially, uh, in the design process. Uh, and as soon as you could just move on to my last slide, um, I'll just conclude, I suppose, by saying 
again, yes, this uh, may be uh, challenging and, and difficult in, in, in practice. I think it's nonetheless necessary. It may be necessary in order to comply with legal requirements. It may be necessary in order to uh, fully achieve the potential of these types of AI tools. Uh, but I think it's really fundamentally necessary because uh, otherwise the public may not trust these types of technologies. And that lack of trust, I think, in technology and in science is becoming a very real uh, issue. Uh, I think we're going to see that uh, in a very different context in the, in the new year with the rollout of uh, vaccines for the pandemic. For, um, I think that uh, there, it should not be enough that experts simply say, I'm an expert. Uh, you need to take what I say uh, on trust and believe me. But experts need to be uh, demonstrating that expertise and applying that expertise in a way that ensures that the public are satisfied uh, that what they're doing is right and legal and uh, ethical and so forth. So in the particular context of um, energy and, and smart grids, there is actually uh, some relatively detailed uh, practical advice av available. And the Commission has done quite a lot of work on this. There have been smart grid uh, task force, which, which have produced, for example, a data protection impact assessment template for smart grid and smart metering systems. Uh, the Commission has developed a, a detailed uh, recommendation on the role of, of smart metering systems, which essentially can act as a good checklist for whether or not all these things are actually being included in the process. And there is also another report from the Smart Grids Task Force uh, on My Energy Data, which essentially sets out uh, recommendations for data sharing uh, and uh, data governance. So there, there is material there which can help us actually uh, implement these kinds of ideas in practice. And with that, I will hand back to Lucien to take us to the last segment of the presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ronan. Uh, uh, very interesting your presentation as well. Uh, um, so uh, um, we uh, uh, would like to uh, to continue this uh, um, uh, this session with uh, a roundtable discussion. Uh, we would like to to get some uh, some suggestions. Um, first of all, uh, um, yes, we would like to, uh, to know, uh, from your point of view, uh, what is missing from, uh, from our report. Uh, if you have some, uh, some recommendations, some suggestions, uh, uh, for us, how we, we could, uh, improve this, uh, this report. Now, uh, we are very, uh, uh, also very happy to, uh, to get some suggestions from industry. Uh, even if uh, we try to focus uh, uh, on, uh, uh, yeah, uh, specific uh, topics coming from industry, uh, we we uh, took in consideration uh, uh, many uh, different uh, uh, applications, uh, and also um, we try to connect uh, our uh, work with ongoing projects, uh, uh, which of course uh, are connected with uh, uh, industrial partners. So. Uh, the, um, we uh, we would like to, to get some uh, um, some feedbacks, and uh, um, yeah, actually, um, I uh, um, I would like to uh, to ask our um, specialist, let's say, uh, Robert, uh, uh, would you like to uh, to say something? Would you like to to comment on uh, what we have discussed here? So 